Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Monday. It is June 12th, and this weekend we really start feeling like June. Yes, I mean, we were told about the temperatures. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, Justin and Mike were telling us it was going to get pretty hot, but it was funny, like, just talking to people out and about, oh, my God, it's so hot. I'm like, yeah, we were expecting it. I got to tell you, though, Justin, in the break between the shows, I stepped outside. I still couldn't see the sun. Yeah. Clouds are out right now. now, so that is helpful. It uh, holds off the heat for, you know, like an hour. And then, then it'll kick in once these clouds clear out. I would give it to about lunchtime. The sun will pop out. It will be in full force this afternoon. If you had any doubt whatsoever that uh, the heat was on here in Texas, here's some proof. Uh, 111 in Rio Grande Village yesterday. That's down in Big Bend, but it was the hottest place in the country. We are pretty much the hot spot here in the United States here over the next couple of days. And uh, the cold spot this morning was up in Michigan. It was 28 up there. That uh, that sounds pretty cold, but sounds actually kind of nice at this point. Uh, 83 degree temperature difference between the high and low. We do have some heat advisories in place uh, for parts of South Texas. That includes those areas southwest of San Antonio that you have highlighted in orange. Although I should point out that everyone is going to see some pretty extreme heat indices today. So uh, we just got to take precaution no matter where you are here in South Texas. Here's a look at some of the numbers forecast high here in San Antonio today. 98, but that translates to a 104 to 105 heat index. So uh, yeah, we still got to be careful and you, uh, it definitely will be up in the triple digits. Places like Pleasanton, Pearsall over to Carrizo Springs. So our forecast today, clouds early. Those clouds break up around lunchtime. Then we're close to 98 for a high today, mostly sunny and uh, look for temperatures to only go up from there. We're, we're dealing with some uh, pretty big time heat by the end of the week. More on that in just a bit. Let's get over to Steven now. I know it was a busy morning for you, sir. It was, Justin, and I found a buddy with a pool over the weekend, but I don't think that was enough to cool me down. So. Yeah, but you know, roads are looking pretty cool right now. Let's get a quick look around town. There's 35 at Maine. Upper and lower levels aren't too bad. In fact, our morning commute throughout the uh, early hours was a little bit busier, but now things have quieted down. Earlier, we had that pretty big crash that involved multiple vehicles along 281 South, not too far from Brook Hollow. That had folks back to back for quite a while, but thankfully, first responders were able to clear that up, and things are looking a lot better. Check out 410 at Ingram North. Uh, right now, we're not seeing a lot of traffic in that direction. A few stall vehicles still remain, and what we're catching on our map are plenty of slowdowns. That's because we have a lot of work, a lot of road work taking place in and around town. So just prepare for that as a quick reminder tonight. If you have to travel for whatever reason along I-10 in Guadalupe County, barrier work should hold you up for a little bit. It's going to start around 9 tonight and wrap around 5 in the morning. We'll see a single westbound main lane closure at Santa Clara Road, but there is plenty of work taking place throughout the month of June. So scan this QR code it takes you directly to our case at traffic page. We have a full list of all the closures that are happening for the rest of the month. So just make sure to know before you have to go. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Top stories this morning. 18 year old man driving to work now recovering after being shot in the hand and the leg. The man was driving his usual route to his job at Amazon yesterday. That's when he says someone driving a sports car starts speeding around him, trying to cut him off. When both cars exited onto Highway 90, the man says the driver of that sports car pulled out a gun and started shooting. He says seven to 10 bullets went through his car and he was shot in his hand and in his leg. I slowed down. He got on the right of me and he had rolled his window down and he started talking. So I rolled down mine. I put my hands up and I was like, all right, bro. I said, chill, I'm just trying to get to work. I was screaming, no way, like no way this is happening. San Antonio police still searching for the driver of that sports car for now. The victim says he will need surgery on his hand. And in case you missed the runoff election results from this past Saturday, districts one and seven in San Antonio have new representation. All right, so in the district one race, Sue Cor easily defeating incumbent Mario Bravo. She had about a 20% lead over Bravo most of the evening. And Cor saying she is ready to hit the ground running in her district at her victory party. She said she wants people to know that this is who she elected. She's gonna get things done. And one of her first issues is addressing infrastructure. In the District 7 race, Marina Arrete Gavito cruised to victory over Dan Rossiter. She maintained a healthy 25% lead throughout the night, and she will replace Ana Sandoval, who resigned from City Council in January for personal reasons. Now, Gavito said she is ready to get to work for her constituents after her victory. She says she wants to focus on accountability and transparency, and she wants the city government 
to work for the residents. All right, well, aviation professionals from around the world, they're in San Antonio for a conference. They're taking time to engage and educate local students about careers in aviation. Tiffany Huetas joins us live from the Boeing Center at Techport to tell us more about these hands-on learning experiences and opportunities in the aviation and aerospace industries. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Stephanie and Max. I love this center. Every time I come here, it's just so exciting. So many different things, but check it out. This area right here, this is a 3D artwork area. You can see 3D apparel and everything 3D here. But today, 100 students, grades 8 through 12, will participate in different workshops, and they're going to be learning all about this. This morning, we have a special guest with us. We have Cleveland April with the Airport Minority Advisory Council and Will Garrett with Port San Antonio. Good morning to both of you, the three of you as well. Um, tell me a little bit about this conference and what is happening here today. Yes, again, I'm Cleve Dunn Jr. with the Airport Minority Advisory Council, and the Airport Minority Advisory Council is here in San Antonio putting on our 36th annual conference where we expose minorities and women to the aviation industry. A part of the uh, Airport Minority Council is the AMAC Foundation Board. The AMAC Foundation Board puts on Project Lift where we expose young people to the aviation industry and invite them to participate in this industry. Today we have over 106 kids here, some from the San Antonio area, some from Louisiana, that uh, get a chance to see all the things that take place in aviation. And April, what are you looking forward to the most today? Oh, we're so excited just to impact the young people, expose them to aviation, let them just know there's a, a great world out here for them and a lot of opportunities and experience for them to have. And so we're looking to make that impact on the San Antonio youth today. Amazing. Now, Will, behind you, as we can see, the chairs are getting set up. We're seeing different stations here. Tell us about this space here and what is so important about this event for San Antonio. Well, Tiffany, the AMAC Foundation's board project Lift, Leaders Inspiring Future Talent, aligns directly to the San Antonio Museum of Science and Technology's Area 21. That's all about grabbing a kid where they love to be, where their mind is, and encouraging them and showing those career pathways. And as you know, both at Port San Antonio and across town, we have a tremendously large aerospace and aviation industry. And the, today's event is going to not only inspire kids, but really show them what are those steps to go change their life and build a career in aerospace and aviation. And behind you, we're seeing already Boeing right there. Tell us about that. We have all these different spaces here. Absolutely. And so, as you know, earlier this year, Boeing came on and made a major donation in our education foundation and put their name on this center. And with that, they built out an interim exhibit that gives students and kids and adults the chance to fly simulators of military aircraft, commercial aircraft, and they're building out a world-class exhibit, again, for hands-on learning, excitement, education of students that all align to those future career pathways that our employers need here in the community. Amazing. Well, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see the faces because every time I come here, I'm always all smiles and I'm excited to see the students come here. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. We're going to talk to the students that are coming this way in just a moment and we'll bring that story for you coming up on the Noon Show. We'll send it back to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Tiffany. And this week, organizers of San Antonio's Juneteenth Parade will be busy with final preparations for this year's event. So the parade will take place on Saturday. It will start in the parking lot of Sam Houston High School on East Houston. And the procession will make its way down WW White Road and end at Comanche Park number two. After that, the celebration continues with several events at Comanche Park and around the city. Top of your morning headlines, former President Donald Trump preparing to face a federal judge and enter his plea in the Mar-a-Lago records investigation. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, Trump's court appearance tomorrow follows a whirlwind weekend of campaigning in which he told supporters he's not leading the 2024 presidential race even if he's convicted. This morning, security ramping up in downtown Miami. The Secret Service already surveilling near the federal courthouse where former President Donald Trump is set to formally face charges, alleging he mishandled classified records and obstructed government efforts to get them back. You get indicted over nothing? You get indicted over the Presidential Records Act, which they don't even admit they call it the Espionage Act. Trump, now the first current or former American president to face federal criminal charges and to do so while campaigning for another term. If even half of it is true, then he's toast. It's a very detailed indictment uh, and it's very, very damning. Trump insisting he's done nothing wrong and that he will never leave the 2024 race. 
A new ABC News Ipsos poll finds nearly half of Americans polled think Trump should have been charged in the records probe, and nearly the same number think the charges are politically motivated. Most Republicans believe that the law is used as a weapon against Donald Trump. Former President Trump has no one to blame but himself for being federally criminally indicted. The sweeping 49-page indictment quotes Trump's own words from his 2016 campaign. I'm going to enforce all laws concerning the protection of classified information. No one will be above the law. But the indictment from special counsel Jack Smith alleges Trump refused to return national defense records with some allegedly found improperly stored in a ballroom, a storage room, and a bathroom at Trump's Florida estate. Our laws that protect national defense information are critical to the safety and security of the United States, and they must be enforced. That was Justin Finch reporting. Now, one of Trump's aides also facing indictment in the same records investigation. Former president is due in federal court tomorrow afternoon, and we're going to be sure to keep you updated. All right, time now, just about 9.09, 79 degrees. Well, while some of us just want extra towels, others prefer an in-room private orchestra concert. Oh. Okay, we're, we're going to talk about some of the weirdest room service requests according to Hotel.com. And a local nonprofit using music to bring dreams to reality for people with disabilities after the break. Lee Waldman brings us center stage with the organization Dreams Fulfilled Through Music. Good morning and welcome back. So music can be a very powerful tool, powerful outlet, and one local nonprofit is using it to spread the message of healing and hope. The organization Dreams Fulfilled Through Music held its yearly fundraiser yesterday, and the organizers told Lee Waldman their mission is to help people of all different abilities to turn their dreams into reality. Get your toes tapping and hands clapping. Made me happy, regardless of my physical condition. The polka tunes of award-winning band Mike and the Middle Tones spread through the Magic Theater. And on the weekends, I'm doing this. I'm kind of a weekend warrior accordion player. In his regular 9 to 5, Dr. Mike Middleton is the head of nuclear medicine at Baylor Scott & White in Temple. No one ever really thanks me for injecting them with radioactive substances. But they do happen to thank me when, when I play some music that makes them happy. Different kind of healing than he does in a hospital setting. That's the mission of Dreams Fulfilled Through Music, a nonprofit started by Mary Catherine Archuleta and her daughter Catherine in 2005. Catherine was hurt her senior year of high school and now has trouble walking. As a person living with disabilities, she knows the importance of being told you can rather than you can't. Sometimes we need to be able to feel like, hey, we're useful too. We are able to give back to our community the same way others can. Over the past 18 years, Dreams Fulfilled Through Music has helped over 900 people of all ages and abilities learn music and share their talents across the country. They've seen how transformative it can be. Some of them will come in completely nonverbal, then two or three years later, they're singing songs. Frank Villani is on the Dreams board. His grandson is autistic. Being a part of this organization, he says he has a new appreciation for the work being done. It's about allowing people to be who they are and show all that they can be. Um, and I think that's what Dreams does. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. And let's look out there with live cam. Yeah. Honestly, step outside, it wasn't too bad yet, but that's because the, the sun hasn't showed up for work yet. It's kind of just gross, Justin. Uh. I mean, it, I don't know how it could to be say worse. It. it could be worse, though, once the sun comes it. out. I was going to say, it's yeah. going to get worse, isn't it? It will be. It will be worse. Yeah, it is humid right now. And the clouds help for a little bit, but they can't help for very long because they're going to burn off here within the next couple of hours. The temperatures will shoot up. Uh, we are nearing the summer solstice. Uh, and our days are getting nice and long. I want to show you some of the sunset times. Uh, sunset today is around 834 on the solstice, which is June 21st. It's at 836. Now notice after that, the sunset gets even later. But keep in mind that the sunrise gets a little later. So our longest day is on the 21st. But our sunset goes as late as 837 as we get into late June and early July. So nice long days and, of course, 
Uh, we're going to be dealing with some heat the next couple days. You know that by now. You've probably heard it. As we look at the future cast, we are going to have some storms off to our north today. It's around the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex where the risk is highest for severe weather today. Some storms will come through and there is a, a risk for numerous severe storms up there. But notice that it ends right there at the hill country. So most everything, everything will be to our north today. We're not going to see any of that rain. Uh, we're just going to be dealing with heat, and that's because our heat high is nudging in from the south. It gets closer to us next couple of days and through the end of the work week, which is why uh, temperatures will be uh, going up from where they are now. And by Friday, it's not over top of us, but it's pretty darn close. And that's when I think we'll probably see our highest temperatures. As we look at the numbers ahead here, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, it's probably our peak uh, when we're talking heat here in the heat index. Uh, jumping up to around maybe 106, 107 in some cases. That's when you start to get into that danger territory. But even today with a heat index of 104, we got to be careful. Any time spent outside, any long period of time, uh, you can start to get into some issues there, especially during the afternoon hours. So right now, cloudy. That, again, is helping us with temperatures some. Dew point is at 72. Southerly winds at 14 miles per hour. And here's like the satellite picture, and you can see those morning clouds that have uh, uh, taken hold here. We've got clouds from San Antonio to Rock Springs over to Del Rio and Eagle Pass. There are some breaks here and there, and these clouds will break up pretty quickly, I'd say, by 11, 12 o'clock this afternoon. 76 Kerrville, 78 right now Hondo, low 80s for Pleasanton and Kennedy, so obviously we're already off, getting off to a warm start. And as uh, we get into the afternoon, temperatures should make their way up to around 98, I think, here in San Antonio. If we didn't have those clouds, we'd probably be up near 100. So it does make a difference, a degree or two. Heat index somewhere around 105, 106. And that's going to be the case for most of Bear County. Uh, New Braunfels, 97, with a heat index of 105. And by the way, these are temperatures at 5 p.m. this afternoon. So these are our high temperatures and kind of peak heat indices. I do need to pass this along, too, something uh, to remember this time of year. When we get temperatures even up to just say 95, uh, the grass can be as hot as 105, concrete 125, and the asphalt 140. So this is important to remember when you're out walking the dog. Uh, in the afternoon, it's not, it, not advised because those paws can burn in about five minutes at 120 degrees. So on a day like today, uh, if you're gonna walk the dog, do it early in the morning, late in the evening, because uh, we know the sidewalks and uh, the concrete and the asphalt can heat up very, very quickly. All right, 100 tomorrow, 101 Wednesday for Flag Day. Uh, heat indices will be anywhere from 102 to 107. And uh, as we showed you, 103 Thursday, Friday, Saturday, probably our peak heat, or at least that's the hope at this point. Uh, maybe we'll start to slide down a little bit late next week and into early next week. Well, well, we'll take that next week if it's a little bit of an improvement there. Wow, 103. <laughs> that's just... In my uh, face. <laughs> yeah, it is. No. Steph through the morning has just been this ray of sunshine because we need it. She always, no is. she always She's is. She's always trying to find the silver lining. It's and I'm just like, yeah, Wait, I there's a lot of 103 on the screen. You're like, well, you know, it'll get cooler. I'm like, you're right, <laughs> at, least the follow, at least the following week. Yeah. <laughs> we have something to look forward to. Thank you, Steph. Thank you, Justin. 919, 80 degrees. And when we come back, a look at the top five films in theaters right now and a look at a new kids movie coming out this weekend. The Boogeyman fell to fifth place on ticket sales of $6.9 million. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 took in $7 million to stay in fourth place. The Little Mermaid sank one spot to third place, earning $22.8 million. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter Files! Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse lost the top spot, but $55.4 million gave the animated sequel a 10-day total of $225 million. Transformers Rise of the Beasts is the new king of the box office jungle, opening with $60.5 million, a considerably higher debut than the last two films in the franchise. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Okay, so you went this weekend to the yes. movies, tried to beat the heat, what'd you see? We saw Spider-Man, okay. the new Spider-Man. One to ten, what are we thinking here? Uh, I mean, it was a good nine. Whoa! Maybe it, well, I don't know, I, mean, I guess because I like the, the first one Fair. and there's more to come without giving too much away so we're like it's a 
a movie in the process. All right. Yeah. Well, don't but it worry. Was good. It was you, good. You have another movie to see this weekend, yes. a new Disney Pixar animated film coming to the big screen. That's right. ABC's George Pinocchio went to the premiere of Elemental last week to speak with some of the cast and check this out. How'd you do that? It's the minerals. Check this out. <laughs> awesome! Elemental takes us into the world of Element City, where the residents are made up of either fire, water, earth, or air. The story focuses on the beautiful ember and someone who literally goes with the flow, Wade, who hopes fire and water will mix. And then when we actually got to see the film for the first time, I got chills. Like to see her come to life and see all of the animators' hard work, it really takes like 15 villages to make something like her and Wade happen as well. Why do they even have these? Eh, who knows. I was told once, the movie in your head doesn't exist, and this one actually not only exists, but like superseded my imagination. They literally created new technology to make this movie happen. It's been seven years in development. Also in the cast, Wendy McClendon Covey as a cloud named Gale. I said yes to it before I even knew what it was. It was like, oh, it's Pixar. Yes! <laughs> so, yeah, I would have played, you know, a pile of garbage. <laughs> and you would have done a good job yeah, at it. I would have nailed it. Too, too. You'll see Elemental in theaters nationwide June 16th. In Los Angeles, George Pinocchio for ABC News. And if your little ones love Squishmallows, mine does. The little Squishmallow stuffed toys, you may have to get to McDonald's soon. They're being added to Happy Meals. Every participating McDonald's will have 10 to 12 Squishmallows to drop in Happy Meals. And some of the toys will also come with customized music playlists matching their personality, of course. You can access the song by scanning a QR code. And some of the artists include Taylor Swift, Billie Eilish, The Eagles, and ABBA. How fun. All right. So... We may have a lot of visitors in San Antonio mm -hmm. for summer vacation or heading out of town for a trip. So here's something to think about. Hotel.com, they've released their first ever room service report. This is not the report I was expecting. They revealed the top 10 most bizarre hotel service requests. Yeah, they're pretty bizarre. I just usually ask for more towels. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> the company looked at over 470 hotels with in-room dining available in 10 countries, including the U.S., and among the quirkiest hotel requests were in-room private orchestra concerts. That was me, sorry. Wow, <laughs> bougie. <laughs> Breakfast delivered by canoe okay. and robot operated room service. So there was even a 24 karat gold brioche bun burger that was ordered with a price tag of about $1,600. Okay, so we have a place here that has the golden brioche bun burger. I can't imagine it adds much to the taste. All right, so here, here's a look at the top 10 most unusual requests. Diet water. <laughs> Sorry. People really working on their fitness over there. I, I'm not sure. Yeah. What diet water is it? I, I it's calorie-free water, Justin. Is what it, don't you understand? Well, maybe, maybe it has. We'll have to look that up. Maybe it has more like electrolytes. <laughs> no, I, I want to say that was probably a hotel guest who didn't know what they were doing. That's so funny. Uh, melted ice cream. Okay. Which, if you've ever had melted ice cream, it's pretty good. So I'll well, give them that one. Well, yeah. I mean, but I can do that myself. <laughs> Boiled bottled water. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And raw fish that guests brought and wanted to cook themselves. So rounding out the top 10 was cockle popcorn, and it's not like what you get at the movies. This is a small mollusk, so it's like popcorn shrimp, but with a mollusk, no egg white omelet, rice bowls for dogs, nice. bison, and eggless eggs. Okay, so it's, what eggs? Is it a spicy <laughs> Middle Eastern dish? Wow. I know there's a lot going on here. Okay, okay. And then what is after the eggs? The eggs are poached and fiery hot and rich tomato Oh, it's sauce. shakshuka. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's okay. actually really good. Okay. If you haven't had it, you should try it. Oh, but eggless. But eggless shakshuka. Okay. So it's just so the like red is, sauce. It's also known as eggs in purgatory. Oh, oh. okay. There's I've, a lot going on here. I've never heard of that. Just like scrambled, you know. Over easy. Yeah, I'm, I'm easy. <laughs> I, I like, what'd you say? You just order new towels? More yeah, towels? Yeah. Or, you know. Extra pillow here and there? You know, if needed. None of that. No. Justin Horn's going to jump on the diet water trend, though. <laughs> Can I please have a diet water as I'm soon as possible? I'm going to have to research that one because that, uh, that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> so weird. Time now, 928, 80 degrees out. We'll be right back.
Good morning and welcome back. All right, if you've been with us the last 10 minutes, we had our extensive research department really deep dive into diet water. We found yes. multiple yep. diet waters, we one did. of which, Justin Horn, gluten -free. is gluten-free. Mm -hmm. I've been drinking the whole water, my whole, the wrong water my whole life. I, I guess that. so. Uh, <laughs> Me too. It's amazing the stuff you learn on this show. I feel like I've become much more educated. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Mm. All right, well, let's take a look at this picture on our KSET Connect. Uh, that is a baby vulture on the balcony of UT Health this morning. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, how do you want us to react to that? Were you waiting, like, were you waiting know, for that? This is like a pretty <laughs> bird. They're not there for good reasons. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> I was not expecting Stephanie's reaction, but she is a ray of, of positivity, and I do appreciate that. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, it is a cool picture. They're, they're cool to see. Uh, anyway, thank you for sending that in, Miss Cat. Uh, we appreciate the pictures as always. Uh, I want to show you today is high temperatures. Uh, we're going to be in the triple digits in some spots here at 98 probably here in San Antonio. But look at the numbers up around Amarillo. Highs only in the upper 60s today. They had a front come through. They've had some rain. Uh, pretty impressive it's going to be that cool up there. But the rest of the state will be baking. Uh, 90s and triple digits for a, a lot of spots. We do have those heat advisories in effect. South and west of San Antonio. Cloudy skies this morning. Look for those clouds to start to burn off by about 11 o'clock noontime. And then uh, we'll see highs up around 98, as I said. Uh, with no rain chances today. There will be some storms to our north, but nothing here. And the heat index value somewhere around 104, 105 a little bit later today. Guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Out of that amazing survival story out of Columbia, four children lost in the jungle for 40 days after a plane crash. All the children found alive. And as ABC's Derek Dennis explains, new video has surfaced from the rescue as we learn about how they survived. This morning, a helicopter rescue that's almost unbelievable. Four young children found together and alive, surviving two miracles in one. First, a deadly plane crash, then 40 days wandering alone in the Amazon jungle. Este es un milagro de Dios. Manuel Ranoque, the father of two of the children, saying the children are recovering well, giving thanks for the care they're receiving at a military hospital in Bogota, Colombia, and for their lives. The children, ages 13, 9, 4, and a 1-year-old who are also indigenous, recovered in the dense, wild Amazon rainforest after a month and 10 days on their own. A plane crash killing their mother and two other adults, including the pilot. Search teams finding the plane, but not the children who were also on board. Small footprints and half-eaten fruit giving rescuers clues to their path. Then a recording of their grandmother was used, telling them to stay put. I imagine in that rainforest they would have had torrential downpours and then issues with getting food, with clean water. I think there was someone in their family that gave them some traditional knowledge. I think that's what saved them for the most part. Turns out it was the 13-year-old who used her knowledge of the Amazon to keep them all alive and safe. The country's president visiting them in the hospital and tweeting a photo of the rescue, writing Esperanza, hope. Doctors say the children could stay hospitalized for two to three weeks while they regain their strength. Their story of survival and their rescue captivating Colombia and the world. Derek Dennis, ABC News. All right, a traffic nightmare for drivers in Philadelphia. You probably saw the video, a section of I-95 collapsing from flames yesterday. Officials there saying it's going to be a while before things are back to normal. Take a look. The fire began after a tanker truck carrying a petroleum-based product caught fire under the highway. It caused part of the bridge to collapse. One driver recorded video of the scene as he drove over the other side of the bridge. I thought, okay, maybe this is just the construction part. I didn't think for a second that the road under me was collapsing. And that part of the, the highway will have to be replaced, too. The rebuilding of I-95 is going to be a massive project. And until that happens, you are literally going to have millions of people in what is one of the largest population centers in the country mm -hmm. uh, impacted in a significant way. Officials have started putting detours in place. The mayor of Philadelphia says the fire is under control advises drivers to plan for alternate routes or modes of transportation. 
Um, Pennsylvania officials say traffic in the area expected to be affected for months. The National Transportation and Safety Board sending a team to investigate how this all happened. The cause and circumstances still under investigation. So far, though, no injuries reported. In your consumer news, two Swiss banking giants are becoming one. UBS will now absorb Credit Suisse after finalizing a $3.2 billion deal. Swiss banking regulators helped broker it after Credit Suisse looked to be in danger back in March. And major questions swirling around a company that makes airbag inflators found in millions of cars. Arc Automotive, which is based in Tennessee, they've refused a request from federal regulators to recall the parts. Now, federal officials say it appears that the parts are defective, but Arc disagrees. The company has been sued in the past over claims of poor welds on multiple components. Summer work routines may include a lot more time in the sun and less in the office. Posts, postings on Indeed for summer internships are down while places like pools, camps, and restaurants are still scrambling to find workers. In tech news, Twitter and Google fighting over finances. Uh, Platformer News says the social media company refuses to pay its Google Cloud bill. The $1 billion contract is up for renewal this month. The dispute may lead to some Twitter safety services going offline. Microsoft is rolling out Bing voice mode to its browser on desktops. Users just click the microphone on Bing's chat box and ask your questions, and Bing even has its own voice for responses. Five languages, including English, can be used, but Microsoft says more will be added later. And time to power up gamers. Microsoft is releasing a black version of the Xbox Series S console. Now, the new device comes with one terabyte of storage for endless hours of gaming, and you can get your pre-orders right now. It's dropping September 1st for $350. Speaking of gaming, Game 5 of the NBA Finals tonight, the series back in Denver. Nuggets lead the series 3-1. to one. If they win tonight, they're going to have won their first NBA championship. Here's the fun fact. They're joining the Spurs in the only team to have come from the ABA to the NBA and win a championship. So there you go. I don't know if Spurs fans are like, I guess we're rooting for them. I, also, I know there's a lot of animosity left over from the 2013-2014 finals with the Heat. Heat, yeah, a lot of that. I, I, I've heard a lot of fans talk about yeah. that. But your mom, a Nuggets fan, yeah. she was also saying, yes. I kind of don't want them to win tonight because you don't want the season to be over. Right, she wants to watch more, you know, more, more of these games yeah. and have the season keep going. But um, and, and that's what's going to happen just in case it, it does keep going, oh. if, it, if it's necessary. But I'm sure I told my mom, I'm sure the Denver Nuggets just want to get it done. Yeah, you and, win at home, too. Yeah, and bring the trophy. Yeah. No. It was funny. A couple years ago, I think it was LeBron and the Cavs won uh, in Golden State. And they yeah. said for the entire next season, it still smells like champagne in there. So you don't want that. You no. want to win at home. No, I mean, but I mean, I guess you just want to win. Yeah, get the ring. Go <laughs> that's, home. that's true. Here's the best part, though. You can watch it all right here on KSAT 12. That's true. All right, time now, 940, 80 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and you probably would not expect to see a bear anywhere in the ocean, but when we come back, we're going to tell you where this video was taken from as a small bear gives beachgoers quite the surprise. And as we head to break, here's a look at some of the activities going on at public libraries around the city. Look at the temperatures. Ooh, feels like we're going to be in the hundreds, so it might be a good idea to stay indoors, have some fun today at the Schaefer Library. Kids can play yard games, cornhole, giant Jenga, and more. That's 1215 to 115 this afternoon. Then from 3 to 4 p.m. at the Bazan Library, school-age kids can use their creativity and imagination playing with blocks and magnet tiles for a look at all the events at different libraries around the city. Just head to the kids. KSAT Kids section of KSAT.com. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. After seven and a half years, a grandmother and her grandson just completed their goal to visit all 64 national parks. Grandson Brad Ryan has been documenting their travels on Instagram, calling the Samoa visit the best place to, quote, conclude this epic chapter Grandma Joy's road trip, end quote. That is adorable. I love these videos. I love it. The idea for this journey came after Grandma Joy told her grandson that she had regretted the few trips she had taken in her life up until then. Well, I've always wanted to see the bear catch the thief in Alaska. And I got to do that, and I enjoyed every bit of it. When we were in Colorado, we hiked across the Great Sand Dunes. And when we got to the top, that was when Grandma Joy decided that she wanted to roll down the sand dune. 
I love that. So Brad says his 93-year-old grandmother made history as the oldest living person to visit every U.S. national park. That is amazing. Congratulations, Grandma Joy. All right, if you're not looking at your screen right now, you, you might want to check this out. Not something you expect when you go to the beach. A bear splashing through the Gulf of Mexico before running onto the Florida shore. So beachgoers can be seen getting close to the bear and even trying to pet it as it enjoys Ooh. a quick swim. So right now it's not clear how the bear ended up in this situation, but with this weather, we don't blame it for trying to cool off. I mean, it looks like a perfect idea right there. I also want to say the water looks beautiful. Well, and that's probably yeah. what the bear thought. Like, I just can't let me dive enough. in. <laughs> All right, so that's in Florida. Let's take a live look out here in the Alamo City. Just as hot. Yeah, it's <laughs> just hot. I still don't see the yeah. sun here, Justin. What do you say, 11 a.m.? That's when we start to see some sunshine? 11, 12, yeah, maybe some breaks in the clouds. Hey, listen, the longer these clouds hang around, the better off we are. We want them to stick around as long as possible because yes. that'll keep temperatures down. And when you're talking a degree or two this time of year, it does make a difference. So let's uh, first start with this cloud cover, and we'll show you where it's setting up. Uh, right now over San Antonio, off to the west, you can see the cloud deck. Morning clouds are always tricky. They always make for a tough forecast, but uh, typically these things try to break up by 11, 12, and I think that's probably the case today. We're already starting to see some breaks off to the east of San Antonio, and again, that corridor of thicker cloud cover right there from San Antonio over to Del Rio, basically along Highway 90. And the longer, again, these stick around, the better off we are. And right now we have that deck of clouds working through San Antonio, so overcast at the moment. I want to take you up to the north. We've got some big time storms now moving through parts of Oklahoma and North Texas. There were big storms yesterday. Now they're uh, going again. Right along I-35, there are a line of severe storms. And then this tail end may work its way through Dallas, Fort Worth. There is a front here. So we showed you earlier Amarillo in the 60s. It's probably going to stay there today. They've got cloud cover, cooler conditions. Boy, that would be nice. This front does not make it here. It gets stuck up there around North Texas, but the highest today in Amarillo is 66. You go south of that, we've got triple digits in 90s. Uh, pretty incredible. 101 in Del Rio today. The heat index could be as high as, I'd say, 106, 107, maybe not 110, but uh, hot nonetheless. We've got those heat advisories in place. So a large portion of Texas today is going to be baking. That includes here in San Antonio. So as you plan out your day, 89 noontime, know that the clouds will start to break up there. And then uh, 98 by 5 p.m., mostly sunny this afternoon and a good southerly breeze. But that continues to usher in the, the moisture, which adds to that heat index. Uh, 95 at 7 o'clock, 92 at 8 p.m., and then down to 90 by 9 p.m. These are the forecast highs today. So the uh, number here, that's your air temperature. And then the yellow number is the forecast heat index, uh, potentially up to around 106. Uh, here in San Antonio, 106 Hondo, 105 in the Braunfels with a high temperature of 97. So, yeah, we, we may not make it up to 100 today, but it will certainly feel like it. And that's where you start to get to that danger zone we've been talking about. And that's why there are uh, those heat advisories in place. 79 in San Antonio, 79 Stenson, 78 Kelly, 79 over at Randolph. And again, we've got that uh, south southeasterly breeze. Here's a look at the future cast. So we've got those storms up there across the Red River and parts of Oklahoma. This afternoon and this evening, likely another round developing from a roughly Abilene over to Fort Worth down to the Waco area. That's kind of the target zone for some severe weather a little bit later this afternoon. But all of that stays north of us. Uh, I don't think it gets any further south than Austin, so we miss out on the rain today as that uh, skirts east. Then high pressure starts to nudge in, and everything's kind of moving up and over this ridge of high pressures as it typically does, our heat high. And it actually moves a little bit further north by the time we get into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So I think that's when we probably see our hottest temperatures. We're talking 103, but that's what we're forecasting right now. Typically, we start to see the humidity come down a little bit when these heat highs move in, so that kind of offsets the heat index just a little bit. But bottom line here, it's going to be hot, and we've got to be careful. 100 Tuesday. Uh, 101 Wednesday, 103 Thursday, 103 Friday, 103 Saturday, 102 on Sunday. Uh, none of these, well, we may get close to a couple records there, but this isn't uh, just off the charts hot. It is June, but it is above average. We went from below average to above average. Yeah, right. it's, uh, you know, we we knew this time would come. I yeah. just wish it would have held off a little bit longer. Okay, well, maybe in the following weeks we'll see something else. There, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Justin. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Justin. Just about 950, 80 degrees. We'll be right back.
This is not our war. Transformers Rise of the Beasts won the Battle of the Blockbusters at the weekend box office. The seventh film in the franchise debuted with 60 million bucks domestically, 170 million total when you add global earnings. That bumps Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse into the number two spot, but it's still a strong showing. I'm Brooklyn's one and only Spider-Man. Another 55.4 million for a two-week global total of $390 million, making it Sony's highest grossing animated release in history. This is unbelievable. Folks who saw Across the Spider-Verse this weekend saw a different film than last weekend's. What's the guy gotta do to join this spider team? Sony sent an updated version of the film to theaters late last week following audience complaints of poor sound mixing, making some dialogue difficult to hear. April 4th, 2025, that's the date star Vin Diesel says the 11th and next Fast and Furious film will hit theaters. I was looking more single every single weekend. And country star Chris Young turns 38 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. And if you're already thinking about plans for this weekend like we are, the movie The Blackening hits theaters this Friday. So if you're a fan of comedy and horror, then this is the movie for you. CNN's David Daniel gives us a sneak peek. This little reunion about to crack. We got the whole crew back. Really? A cabin in the woods? Nine friends travel to a remote cabin for a weekend of debauchery. Refuse to play, and she dies. I think we have to play the game. But things take a wrong turn when a board game determines their survival in The Blackening. There's a crazy person out here hunting us. You got Rosa Parks on your shirt, right? Would she be sitting down right now? I mean, that's exactly what she did. The stars of the horror spoof struggled to contain their laughter during shooting. It was the most difficult thing ever. Mm. When you are on a set with so many different comedians and other and actors and actresses who who are hilarious within their own right. Mm -hmm. People who are just free and like throw jokes at the wall and you have to be serious. We'd be exhausted going home and I, I remember coming home every night just telling my husband like, I'd be like this tired, but I'd be like, you had to see what was on set today. <laughs> like every single day because we were having that much fun. And I'm one of the good ones. Oh, that does not help. They all say that. That actually makes you seem more suspicious. The ensemble cast had no trouble bonding on the film set. Truly, one of the things I'm most grateful gr grateful for mm -hmm. is the opportunity to be able to like actually make authentic, real relationships with these people mm -hmm. and have it translate on screen. Like watching the movie brings up so many good memories of filming it that I've never not liked watching the movie. Yeah. And I've seen it so many times now, and I'm still like, <laughs> oh my god, like I really love these people. Let's get some weapons. Wait, chili powder girl? What I'm finna do, cook? Sorry, girl, we ran out of that. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. All right, funny, but scary. Be aware of that. What should people know with the weather? We got 10 seconds, go. It's hot. It's hot, yeah, be prepared. <laughs> <all> <laughs> Thanks, Have Justin. a good day. See you at noon. <laughs>